Do you want to be able to tell almost anyone almost anything with only two words? And how about if you could do it without saying a single word? Then you need, not a guarantee, Wolbert's. The new app that's like Pocket Alibi Light, in that it's like Pocket Alibi if Pocket Alibi only had two words instead of 200 words. Oh yeah, and if it also played the Lulberts podcast. Lulberts, that's our word. Not a guarantee, Lulberts is from Beastlick Internet Policy Commission Outreach Team, the good people who brought you Bipcoin, Fiendphone, and the best-selling app, Find Gigi Allen's Grave. Log on today at HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash play dot google dot com and get the free Bipcot licensed app not a guarantee Lulberts do it do it do it till you satisfied the Lulberts presents Libertarian Cringe Theater with your host Jeff Regenbach Today we will be reading from the article, Why I Quit Masturbation, by libertarian blogger A.C. Glazier, writing for Anarchy, Atheism, and Anti-Feminism. Quote, when he isn't shining the light of reason into the dark abyss of ignorance, A.C. Glazier writes fiction. He lives in upstate New York with his cat. Why I Quit Masturbation I discovered masturbation when I was 14 years old. I am now 25. I have never had sex, and I recently have made an oath that I will not release another drop of semen unless it is in within the vaginal walls of a woman. So far, it has been more than one week since this writing, and I am successful. Before this pledge, I would ejaculate anywhere from once or twice, maybe three times a week. Thousands of times I have spent my seat upon the bedsheets, followed by a dull sense of hopelessness and shame, but no more. Fortunately, pornography was never an intense addiction. I merely viewed pornography for several minutes, or I spent an hour once a week just searching through hundreds of Google pages for the perfect video to stimulate my senses. My choice sexual positions and acts were also relatively narrow and conventional. Two girls in one cup? Spare me, please. No, my poison of choice was online dating. I've deleted all of those dating and hookup apps on my smartphone. They yielded nothing but false hopes, embarrassing dates, and painful rejections. I think that online dating is its own unique form of masturbation, as costly to one's time, energy, and money as a gambling addiction. Porn tube is child's play compared to the playground of real, living women waiting on POF or OkCupid. Okay this is by no means the first attempt I have made to cease masturbation. I have been trying to snop ever since I was first hooked. As a grown man, masturbation has become more of a tedious habit that I have taken for granted rather than an addicting high. At first, I believed such a state was a progress being made, but it is a regression, the final stage of utter defeatism and apathy, not just in my sex life, but in everything else, too. At the behest of a friend who was much further along to the path of purity than I, more than two years, I will attempt to once more break free. This time, I will devote myself to a written chronicle of my progress towards perfect celibacy, a brain free from the chains of the orgasm. This time, a great cloud of witness will be watching me. I gravely regret that I have remained in the adolescent stage of masturbation for this long. I feel deeply insecure for falling so far behind while all other men in the world are romantically bound, fulfilling their happy wives with their seed, what better time to start than now? By forging fappery, it will hone my emotional and psychological energy. When I am not distracted by the singing sirens of sex, I want my narrative voice to sharpen, my creative flair to spark, my writing to be better. The more I stew in the agitation of this lonely reality, not constantly retreating back into the harem of my sexual imagination, I will be committing myself to an act known as sex transmutation, the practice of channeling one's sexual energies from the lowly physical to the higher intellectual and emotional parts of one's being. Napoleon Hill in his book Think and Grow Rich elaborates upon the profound mysteries of sex transmutation in the 11th chapter. When driven by this desire, men develop keenness of imagination, courage, willpower, persistence, and creative ability unknown to them at other times. 
So strong and impelling is the desire for sexual contact that men freely run the risk of life of reputation to indulge in it. When harnessed and redirected along other lines, this motivating force maintains all of its attributes of keenness of imagination, courage, etc., which may be used as a powerful creative forces in literature, art, or in any other profession or calling, including, of course, the accumulation of riches. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, page 261. I believe that by blocking the faucet of masculinity, it will stream back into his being, grow into a bright, critical mass, a superpower of sorts. But this trial will be an utter waste if I cannot actually liberate myself from my sexual desire. It will amount to little more than secretive masochism unless I can commit my energy and focus from useful sex to a purposeful revolutionary mission. Instead of messaging silent women online for hours, I will read a book. Instead of getting off to pornography for 20 minutes, that will be more time I will spend writing. My chances of finding a partner only decrease from minimal to absolute zero. The power and strength of one's masculinity is spent when he releases his seed. In that respect, we men are like the praying mantis or the spider. After he has mated with the female, his biological function is complete and is useless save as food for the female. But if the male mantis can withstand his natural urge and forsake the female, she will never eat him, and she will starve, but the man remains immortal. Fortunate indeed is the person who has discovered how to give sex emotion an outlet through some form of creative effort, for he has, by that discovery, lifted himself to the status of a genius. Is it hyperbolic to wish that I will, by defeating my sexual urge once and for all, ascend to the level of genius? I believe it is possible, and I will find out soon enough. Follow me, and you will too. This has been a presentation of Libertarian Cringe Theater with your host, Jeff Regenbach, brought to you by The Lawberts. You can find more at thelawberts.com. That's our word, brought to you by Bipcot and Bean Phone. Yes, Bean Phone is back. And uh, also Raspbian uh, Pixel. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And uh, I don't have a typical Lulbert co-host with me. I have a, a guest co-host. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and what you do? What's up, good peeps? I'm David from the uh, ZGY Zombie Government and New Podcast. Yep. And uh, I'm happy to be on, man. Yep. We kind of modeled our last uh, episode after that because we were like, why don't you come over? Like, we were, we were like, we should drink. And then I was like, you know what? Bring your microphone. Let's just record a podcast. <laughs> so we did that. And, uh, and, and when, when he was uh, on his way over, I was like, you know what? That's kind of exactly what they do over there. So, yeah, it's a cool podcast. But you guys kind of do what we do and kind of pod almost seem, seem like we're going to pod fade. And then we just come out of an episode out of nowhere. <laughs> just bring it right back. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, Psych. Yep. So yeah, uh, so what is your podcast all about for for the people in the back seat? Uh, for the yeah, for the cheap seats, the cheap seats. <laughs> um, it's basically just me and my buddy primarily. But uh, I had uh, Baron on the last show, which was really mm -hmm. cool, man. He uh, he jumped on. We had a good time. I'm poaching your hosts, man, <laughs> one by one. Yeah. Um, but no, you know, it's a uh, it's a libertarian or voluntarist whatever theme show. We basically just talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about but related to liberty but not really dry and uh you know formulaic and we don't harp on the nap and and things like that you know yeah, so, so something try to keep I like saw a little bit lighter today, and organic how does the nap apply to that let's spend like the entire three hours of our show today talking <laughs> about how the non-aggression principle applies to like some richard spencer getting punched in the face and <laughs> no yeah you know no. which there are 
there's plenty of shows like that out there. So I thought, eh, let's just try to do something different and a little more informal. Yeah. And uh, just have fun with it, man. Yeah, it's a great show. I love it. Um, <laughs> and I'm always kind of like, damn it, why are they not producing podcasts? But uh, yeah, so the Sched- low- scheduling conflicts, man. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> that's the reason. That's the, exactly. I do. I, Go ahead. <laughs> I'd do it every day if I could. So, yeah, um, yeah. I would. I would do it not every day. Uh, I would definitely do it every week for sure. But yeah, again, I just have the scheduling conflicts all the time. Um, you know, Matt Pritchard to sauce. I don't know if you ever seen him on YouTube. He used to YouTube way yeah. back in the day. Okay. So yeah, he's one of our co-hosts and we've been trying to get him back because he's been doing what I'm doing now is learning how to program. And he was like, I'm back. I'm going to go do YouTube. I'm going to start doing podcasts some more. And then we had it all set up to do it. And he was just like, yeah, personal things. Um, uh, can we just wait on that for a bit? <laughs> it's like, damn it. You just, it just can't get damn. him on. But when I, when anytime there's an opportunity, I will move a mountain <laughs> to get him on because it's yeah. like you haven't been on in a while. So yeah, yeah. He's I, uh, dude. I always I loved hearing you on the fiends, and then when the Lilberts kicked on, um, he was one of the first guys you had on there, and he was great. So yeah, I need to get him back on there, dude. Yeah, been on that, Matt. We also need more Bab. Bab, Bab has been kind of, uh, <sighs> yeah. Bab, like every time we do a poll, no one votes for Bab, and he's been kind of feeling that <laughs> that sadness a little bit. I, it's like, I guess I missed the votes because I I love Bab, dude. When he was on the fiends, man, I he, I cracked me up like every day. I just love his sense of humor, you know. And then when you picked him up on the Lilberts, I was stoked. So, yeah, Bab yeah, is get him great. Back on there, man. Yeah, Bab is great because I can just. We don't need. Show, he doesn't need show topics either. We can just start hitting recording. We can just have a great banter. It's it's just perfect chem podcasting pro uh, level. Yeah, <laughs> chemistry is perfect. So, anyways, uh, so yeah, it's, you got a great podcast going on there, and um, so yeah, like <laughs> what's been going on in the news? Like there's no shortage of great stuff to talk about. Like I don't even need show prep anymore. I haven't need show prep for six months at least ever. No, yeah. it's the docket's full, man. Yeah. So I decided that, um, Antifa is, is kind of <laughs> antiquated. So I'm going to be anti puh cause I'm anti patriots and uh, I'm going to smash Bradyism cause you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was my full Super Bowl there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wonder how the implication is going to go because that Patriots won when he's trying to make America great again. And, you know, didn't the same yeah. thing happen during it's, 9-11, right? After uh, 9-11, the Patriots won. And it was kind of a, they, kind of a weird thing. They probably did, but uh, they also, the giant, or the Yankees lost, man. They lost to the D-backs, <laughs> the World Series. So kind of evened out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> go AZ. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't go want- regional sports team I- <laughs> and or college team. Um, right. Yeah. I, I just never, uh, I just, I just didn't watch the superb owl this, this year. I just kind of was not interested in it. And it's, and I'm not one of these people that's like, Oh, you like team sports. That's so like, that's so like a uh, statist. statist, you know? Yeah. You, it's, it's like, no, it's tribalism. Bourgeois. Tri- I always harp on against against tribalism. I think it's like one of the worst poisons. But when it comes to sports, it's it's a it's a vice. It's almost a harmless vice. Almost a harmless vice. I mean, people do riot almost. over it. Yeah, but it's almost a harmless vice. It's like you know you shouldn't be getting drunk every single day, and that's what I kind of consider party politics and stuff. Like I mean, it's my team go like that's that's being an alcoholic. Right on Sunday, yeah. watching a football game. And then having a little bit of tribalism, that's that's just, you know, enjoying the weekend. That's being a weekend warrior. That's fine. <laughs> I don't really have totally. a problem with that. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I know people that are way too involved in it, in, like, like every sport. They know everything about it, all the stats, you know, and it's that's their life. And if that's what they want to do, more power to you. But I'm more like, yeah, I'll watch one or two games, uh, football games on the weekend or whatever. And that's about all I watch. I don't watch a lot of baseball or any of that or other stuff, even though they're great sports. Mm-hmm. Just. Too many games and too much time investment. Yeah, I can never but get into baseball I'm unless not gonna... I'm at the game. If I'm physically at the game, then I have the time of my life. If I'm watching it on TV, oh, yeah. I find it boring. Golf, I will probably would find it boring if I was there too. But if I was actually playing golf, that would be a different story. I'd probably have a whole lot of fun. I... But yeah. You know. Oh yeah, I feel the same way. You got I, I respect the 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 hardness or the difficulty of the game, but I'm like when it's on TV, I'm like, just shoot me, dude. <laughs> How can you sit there and watch? Oh yes, he's teeing up at the. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and the, and they're and they're always talking really like they're like they're on NBR. 
Okay, so he's lining up the shot right now. and The fate of the entire world off. rests upon this shot. Yeah, he got about 300 <laughs> yards on that. It's a great little shot for a uh, for a five wood, and everyone's clapping like... <laughs> Kill me now. <laughs> yeah. The, Kill me now. They got like a... No- they have a noise meter. They don't go above, you know, whatever decibel level or I don't know. <laughs> but that's one thing I like about – we just had a big golf tournament here in the Valley in Phoenix. Uh, and the one I like – what I like about that is there's actually a hole that's very uh, rowdy. It's like a party hole. Or um, well, That sounds kind of bad, but one of, one of the <laughs> one of That's the what she there. said. <laughs> yeah, hey oh. Hey <laughs> A party hole in Trump's wall, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's almost like happy, it's almost like happy Gilmore level shit, from what I understand. You know, people are there and they're loud and they're drunk and good times. Yeah, I see, I can that, get behind that, that kind of golf. Yeah, like <laughs> Happy Gilmore made the golf interesting for two hours. <laughs> that was it, right? Or ninety minutes? Not probably a ninety minute film. Yeah, yeah, I was good after that. Not much, not much good came out of Adam Adam Sandler after that. A couple of gems here and there, but mostly just trash. <sighs> Jack yeah, and Jill downhill don't get me started. Don't get me started on Jack and Jill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Antifa, uh, it's kind of interesting watching the left eat itself right now, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Oh, it's amazing. But at the same time, then it's like, well, that's just giving power to the the the, the radical, terrible elements of the right. And, you know, I'm not one of these people that think that, or what what does idiot say, uh, (laughs) uh, meth head say all the time, uh, you're you're letting uh, liberal, the left wing into your right wing movement. It's not a right wing movement. It's, (laughs) if anything, it's kind of a, it's not even a centrist movement, but if if you're going to produce it only on a 2D scale, it'd be somewhere in the middle, right? Because it is. Absolutely. It's it's not really left on, left on money, right on sex. No, (laughs) right on money. Right on money, <laughs> left on sex. Right. Yeah. It's um, you know that's kind of it fiscal, in a nutshell. Fiscal, con- fiscally conservative, socially democratic, or whatever that. That's how that. we. That yeah. That's how I explain it to people that are like who don't get at the first three explanations. <laughs> I give. <laughs> right. You know, it's like oh, libertarians believe in you know like you know like pe- individualism and you know capitalism, and they're like, well, huh? Yeah. Self. Uh, okay, so we believe in a minimal state, uh, minimal role in the government. So what? Okay. Right on money, left on sex. <laughs> oh, okay. Then they get it. And they're like, oh, okay, cool, now yeah. let's explain the philosophy why that kind of works out to be something like that, but not entirely, you know? Like but Yeah, it's a boil it down to its most es- essential components, I guess. Yeah, I don't you gotta care. start somewhere. I don't care what you do Talk in your to bedroom. People on their level. Yeah. Unless unless you're doing furry stuff, then then the fire then the blow torches <laughs> come out. But everything else is fine. <laughs> Kill it with fire, man. Kill, Kill him <laughs> before it lays eggs. Yeah. Allegedly, um, yeah. I yeah. got to get that app. <laughs> yeah, I, I, where's my app? <laughs> I don't even think I turned the ring on my phone. No, but yeah, I, I, I've, I've had some discussions with people like that where they, yeah, he should be punched, and I'm like, well, it just escalates it. Now you're giving them a reason to retaliate even more. Yep. Um, and that whole thing with them shutting down Milo, um, which I don't agree with Milo on a lot of stuff, but. You know he's he's kind of trolly. He's out there to you know get people riled up, and that's. But uh, yeah, it's just crazy that the the level that they take it, they think because I think it's like anything they disagree with, they're going to label as fascism, whether it is or isn't. You know, if it, if you argue for private property, if you you know, or voluntary interactions or whatever, that then you're a fascist or part of the hierarchy, and uh, yeah. That's totally Crazy. correct. Allegedly. But um <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, <laughs> like I like I I really don't care what people do in their bedrooms. I don't care. I really don't care what drugs you do. It doesn't bother me. Um you can do all the meth you want, <laughs> but just don't turn around and call out the people degenerates for doing meth. Uh it, it can we have at least right. have, have that kind of come intellectual honesty. I mean, it's really simple, but but yeah, just the left eating itself. It's it's kind of fun to watch one of your political enemies kill itself, but it's also emboldening the other side. And Milo, I'm not a fan of Milo. I am not a fan of Milo. I, but I do kind of mm-hmm. like the general idea of what he's doing, which is like he said, like that's what he wanted to do with his dangerous faggot tour was to to go out, say provocative things, and incite a reaction from the left that would look damning in the public eye. 
And he explains this up front. The left heard him mm-hmm. say it, and they don't care. They're still falling into that trap. So now we have a guy who was supposed to do, what, speak in front of, what, 100 people or something like that, right? But the yeah. whole entire nation got to hear him speak instead, <laughs> you know, except for the maybe yeah. 100 people. They probably heard he, him. He couldn't have asked for a better, mi- a better, better megaphone. Yeah. Uh, so seriously. now now everybody's like, okay, who is Milo? What is he saying? Why why is it causing this must out, uh, must out uh this much outrage with people who are terrible. He must be saying something right. And they say the same thing about Richard Spencer, maybe to a lesser degree. Um, and they're, they're sure there's people going to listen to it and go, Oh, that's horrible. But there's going to be even more people than previously who were going to say like, that's completely reasonable. Maybe we should physically remove, uh, you know, ethnic minorities <laughs> out of the country. It just, it's not good. <laughs> like Richard Spencer. No, it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Richard Spencer now has a platform on the public stage that make, everybody's listening to. Yeah. You shouldn't make them look to be the more reasonable choice by, by your, uh, by your actions. And most people, regardless of their, I think ideological leanings or what party affiliation or whatever are going to look at people destroying private property and uh, knocking people unconscious in the street. Gen- general uh, lawlessness. Unfavor- generally unfavorably. Yeah. You know, they're going to be like, eh, I don't really want to be a part of that. So this guy looks, you know, like a, a shining knight compared to, a, <laughs> you yeah. know, these so-called anarchists or whatever. Yeah. They're just... It also maybe makes me not uh, want to be calling myself an anarchist too. <laughs> Unless I'm doing it yeah. for shock value. Like if like I was at work today and they were having a discussion about, you know, politics. Or not really about politics, but mostly like how they were talking about politics one day I wasn't there and how someone like flew off the handle, like, How dare you insult Trump and everything? He's our president. And you know, just kind of like, Well, um, would you have done the same thing if we were insulting Obama two weeks ago? Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> or, or King George? Yeah. How dare How dare you uh, insult King George? Yeah, it, it's he's it's, a rightful monarch. And that is one thing I really do like about Trump being president. It's not even about Trump, even if it was any other Republican, because Republicans would be kind of in the same position. Like, don't criticize our president. He's our president. He's legitimate. La la la. But it's like. Yeah, but two weeks right. ago, we were all bashing Obama, and you had no problem with that. <laughs> you were joining along. <laughs> so what's all of a sudden the change? Oh, because it's it's your guy that's in the office it's, now. Yeah. yeah, okay. That's, that's yeah, consistent. That's, <laughs> that's the big flip that I've seen with a lot of my like liberal friends who had no qualms about handing – Obama over to or handing Obama all these uh, mm-hmm. powers, you know, uh, they're around, they're crying about executive orders right now, but you know, they weren't saying anything except right on when Obama was like, I have a pen and a phone, you know, and yep. it's, yeah, it's exactly, it's the powers that you seek for your own can be easily turned against you with the changing of the guard or, you know, so to speak. So. Yep. And I think that was one thing I was really good about being consistent about the, you know, the, the powers of the executive branch, you because I was a liberal when um, George Bush took office. And then during his presidency, I think uh, during the second half of his, that's when I started finding libertarianism. And that's when I was like, okay, so not only do I think that it should be limited, I think it should be even more limited. So when, when Obama came in, I was still upset about the executive, you know, the executive overreach. And it was like, right. I'm being consistent here. And everybody else is, you know, just, oh, no, no, no. Now we have no problem with the Patriarch because a good guy is now watching us <laughs> masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. it's all bad. <laughs> it's all bad. Be consistent. Yeah, no, no, one should, no one should be watching you masturbate unless uh, they're paying you or <laughs> do you have consent. Or it's Ceiling Cat. You know? That's allowed. Man, that's an old ceiling meme. cat. Yeah, that's an old meme reference. Yeah, I saw that pop up the other day. I was like, "Wow, <laughs> that's an old one." Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Yeah, but what are Trump. you? What are you drinking, by the way? This wouldn't be uh, as, right now. This would uh, it would be improper for me to have someone from from your podcast on and not mention what you're drinking. <laughs> that's like one of the things I'm like, "What are they drinking?" And you always mention it. So, uh, right now I'm drinking the Stone Red IPA. Oh, nice, uh, Pat. Patascala, Patascala. Uh, so yeah, good little. It's a good little breakfast beer. Because yeah. I I know for you it's it's uh the you, you work kind of weird hours too, right? Yeah, I work I work a night shift. Yeah. Right. So this is like, like I'm waking up, you're going to bed, but you know. <laughs> yeah, like 
I'm I actually drinking I, at care. eight o'clock at night. From this is eight o'clock at night for me, <laughs> even though it's yeah. eight o'clock in the morning for you. Or no, right? Not yeah. I now. go to work pretty. I go to work pretty early too. So you know, I start. I'll have a few beers in the early afternoon. But for me, that's like eight o'clock for you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But if it, you know, people can have their mimosas and bloody marys. I can have a couple of beers on my my day mm-hmm. off for breakfast. Oh, dude, I love I love bloodies, <laughs> bloodies in the morning after a yeah. long night of drinking. That's a, it's always great. Meal in a glass. Yeah, I'm, I got an arrogant bastard here. I also have a Stone uh, Kelly Bleak IPA. Man, I have fell in love with those ones. But arrogant bastard mm-hmm. still my go to. The only other beer that I would say that I like more than arrogant bastard has been a seasonal thing that they completely discontinued, and that was the Stone Ruination Ten Year Anniversary Ruin Ten, oh, yeah. where they just add like yeah. 10 pounds of hops <laughs> per bottle per, per glass. Yeah. Dude. Per glass. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's like mainlining hop. Uh, it's juice. A good... <laughs> yeah. Shh. Get that green, man. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. It's a great time to be a beer drinker, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I wonder how it's going to change so. with some of the people that Trump's been electing. Cause like Jeff Sessions, I wonder, oh, I want to know if they're going to be bumping up a lot of these blue laws. Um, they, I mean, they haven't been being revoked too much. I mean, no one, uh, where, where I, u- I used to live in Kansas for a couple of years and it was one of those things where you can only buy, you can only buy alcohol in, um, uh, liquor stores and, uh, the liquor stores can't sell anything but liquor. They can't even sell ice. They can't even sell grenadine. Like the grenadine that do sell has 1% alcohol, so they can still sell it as an alcoholic beverage. Oh, wow. If you want to buy sodas, you have to do it at the grocery store or at the vending machine outside. It's just it was a, it's a mess. And um, yeah, oh yeah, like state run, state run liquor stores, right? And you can't they can only buy it within certain times. They had just mm-hmm. recently allowed um, them to be open on Sundays, and it was only it's only a really narrow window. And you can buy cereal uh, cereal beers. I think that's what they call them, cereal beers, which is like. Regular brands of beer, the cheap, crappy beers, but they're like reduced down to three percent alcohol. Yeah, like I did not know that Utah has that a lot. It's called like three two beers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So all filler, no killer, basically. (laughs) Um. I had bought a sick. I had before I even knew about that. I I had just moved out there, and I was like, ah, I'm in Kansas. Life sucks. I'm gonna go get a beer at the quick stop <laughs> i got like a six pack of, <laughs> i was like oh red stripe oh well it's something i guess took it home down the whole thing and i was like i'm not even buzzed <laughs> what is happening and then i looked at the bottle i was like 3.2 percent my dad was like oh yeah yeah they have some weird liquor laws out here <laughs> i was like okay nah, it's, it's i could see him uh i mean I, I he's a big drug warrior per you know fan i could see mm-hmm. him going after our weed more than beer but More you weed. know my, my weed because you know no good people smoke marijuana no you know. good people or whatever oh my god what was that one quote where he said like i would think the kkk um were, were uh weren't so bad if they didn't smoke weed or something like that <laughs> yeah yeah well <laughs> I, I thought i thought more they were into to moonshine but you know i could oh, yeah, be wrong yeah. i'm gonna <laughs> spend a lot of time with that segment of uh some good old shine lately Got to get some or shine. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I could see him going after that, you know, dr- the dr- It seems like for every semi-positive thing Trump does, like kind of decrease regulations, he's talking about, it's all talk, but getting rid of the EPA. Oh, um, no, they they know. just introduced legislation to abolish the EPA. I, I did the see The legislation that, yeah, the did House. get introduced. So that's a thing. C4SS that's is great, complaining you know? about it, but. It's C4SS, <laughs> so take it with a grain of salt. Um, right. I think their argument was something along the lines of it'll, it'll impact tort law and allow more pollution uh, because it's going to lax in tort. So if people mm-hmm. sue a company, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll people can't really sue companies for pollution, which is the way it should work. If you pollute and you hurt my property, I should be able to get compensation through the, through the law. That's how pollution laws should work. Oh, Absolutely. But it seems like that's going to impact that as well. So that's that's their argument. I don't know if it's true or yeah. not. It's C4SS. You know, the guy could Grand have wrote assault, it while he yeah. was drunk driving. 
allegedly. A- alleg- no, not allegedly. <laughs> no, he did. Okay. Yeah, I not, sure. That one was not allegedly. Uh, Brad Spangler was not allegedly <laughs> verified, <laughs> confirmed. Yeah. No, yeah, but that that's one of the dangers. Um, and you always got to look at who's helping. It could be a crony thing, like you mm. said, you know, like, you know, um, companies or corporations, you know, writing favorable legislation to benefit themselves but so yeah you gotta but it initially it's it's promising i think but yeah the devil could be in the details but it seems like for everything that he does that could be positive he does something yeah shitheaded like yeah jeff sessions or or uh you know the the banning of uh you know in, in immigration whatever from yeah. certain countries i think that was more of a shock event like i don't know if you saw that post that i posted it was by some uh political scientist in um was it boston yeah no i did read that that was that was way interesting i like that perspective she was basically just kind of like stop freaking out about it other people have done it too it's a bad rollout but it was a probably a bad rollout because it was probably going to be one of these shock events to kind of get people on one side or another divide the country know who your enemies are know who your coalition is build up your coalition so mm-hmm. that way you can fight a, against them effectively and get what you really want done and then use the art of the deal to get what you really want done is even more countries on that list which is looks like it, it may work because <laughs> everybody's freaking out just like they expected so uh, if that yeah. was their goal, if that was their plan, then it's it's all working out. Just it's scary. it's working perfectly. Yeah. And the left no, is I did see freaking that. out over every little thing. It's just re- I mean the pussy hat thing. I don't uh, I, I don't I don't even know what to make of the of the left now. Like they they've completely oh lost their shit. I mean like they've always been kind they've, of loopy. Even when I was involved, that I don't even I was a little loopy. But man, this is this is crazy. This is, <laughs> I don't even think. No, that's... yeah. I mean, n- nothing screams human dignity or whatever, like wearing a, a vagina on your head or face. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't get yeah. it. I, that, uh, the tactics they're employing are like uh, just mind blowing, uh, mind blowingly bad. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost like they want to fail or they just can't stop shooting themselves in the foot with it. I don't, yeah. I, it's insane. I mean, even I, even I if you got rid of so... Antifa, it's going. It's still crazy. Even if you just complete like, if you say if you want to go with that lie that oh they're really right wingers, it's not. Oh, they're really right wingers trying to make us look bad. It's like okay, well let's completely discredit that. We'll, we'll just say that, that that never happened, never ever happened. What about everything else? <laughs> like explain all of this. This is all ridiculous. Yeah. But but yeah, um, and then one of the speakers at that. Uh, Oh my the God. million women's march or whatever it was was uh actually i think she had been she was either convicted or was implicated in like torturing a gay man like Who? in really horrible ways was that a thing i forgot her name dang it but i know yeah, ashley the judd was there and she gave one of the most insane things ever she gave like, a speech <laughs> it was like completely incoherent i was like what the hell is she talking about oh my god uh, what else? Madonna was talking about blowing up the White House. I think the Secret <clears throat> Service gave her a nice little visit, and it's probably not the kind of visit uh, I, we would get if we said something like that. But oh uh, no, not not by any means. Yeah, they they said, okay, when can we uh, schedule an appointment? You know, or and her lawyer would be there, and you know, they'd be like, it would be more uh, perfunctory, like we're <laughs> we just have to do this, and then we'll let you be on your way, type of thing. I think. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, if you or I said it, it would be you know. Oh yeah, we. Are We'd not, be would renditioned be. somewhere. <laughs> you know, we're not just going to come CIA and talk to you in your site. house. We're going to uh, right. come downtown let's with take, us. Yeah, yeah. Let's take your let's take your computers and uh, you know <laughs> your hard drives and yeah, you, you'll get them back sometime maybe. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed that's this, how that would go. What was that? Um, when the Antifa sprayed that uh, allegedly, where's my app? <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> That that Trump supporter, allegedly. I don't know if you allegedly. noticed. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but her hat didn't actually say "Make America Great Again." It was not a magnet. No, hat. yeah, it said, it said Bitcoin. Yeah, <laughs> make, make Bitcoin make great Bitcoin. again. And what she was saying was, "I'm just here in support of both sides of the peaceful protesters." That's what she was saying. Like she wasn't there yeah. to support Milo. She wasn't there to support anybody. She was just there, like, okay, I'm just here to 
to encourage everybody peaceful. should have a say. Yeah, and that happened. <laughs> that yeah, to it was me poetic. That... Yeah, uh, what's a red hat? You know, <laughs> let's just <laughs> With spray white words on it. How dare you? Yeah, how dare you? You know, triggered. Better <laughs> triggered. I better pepper sprayer. You know what I mean? Yeah, right it, in front it of. It would be interesting, media. like you know, I I would be interested to know how much of the so-called you know ancoms or antifa actually know or use Bitcoin, or if they're all pretty much just devoted to like sitting in their you know. A squatting in somebody's abandoned house and putting out zines, you know, like what, what decade are they really living in? I, I don't know, <laughs> dude. You know what I mean? It's it's almost kind of like their tac their their tactics are straight out of like you know yeah eighteen hundred or nineteen hundreds, you know, early bullshit. It, it, and I, that doesn't work. That doesn't work these days. Yeah, I was making me kind of think about uh, Scientology because Scientology has like these kind of actions, like per policy of L. Ron Hubbard. Where he where they explicitly talks about how to handle people who are suppressive people. People suppressive people is like their cult cliche for anybody who is not a Scientologist or who, is an enemy of Scientologist. Well, not anybody who disagrees not. with the right. Yeah. So anybody who is a suppressive person, there's like these these rules on how to how to handle them, how to talk to them, how to engage in the media and all the, the other stuff, and use all these tactics. But they're not really effective in the age of technology where. You know, there's there's the Internet where people can actually see this stuff happening and see them doing it and look at it and go like, man, this is absolutely horrible what you're doing. Um, and it's kind of like that same thing. Like they're kind of relying on these 18th century philosophers to talk about, like, how we're going to bring change. But they don't figure in like, OK, well, that was interesting for those times. But now we live in, a, in, in an age where, you know. You can see where these people go. There's security cameras that are so clean and detailed that you can say, like, okay, that person smashed the window out. They went here. They went there. And then they left the crowd here. And we can follow them on the next security camera over here. And they're getting into their car and there's a license plate. Like, that all happens right. now. <laughs> so, or, yeah, or not to mention, like, uh, you know, Stingray devices where they yep. can track, you know, your cellular data. Um, I'm assuming that most of these people are running around probably with cell phones, maybe oh, yeah. have a – a, a you know shielding thing or whatever but i doubt all of them do I, yeah i doubt they're listening to gcn and getting that advertisement for a faraday case i really <laughs> sincerely <laughs> listen i mean i'm okay i don't know what that was. i don't know i don't know if that was marijuana but i knew there was, there was some kind of wacky tobacco let me tell you about inter, intersectional um demons that are coming from interdimensional <laughs> folds in the time space continuum they're controlling everything <laughs> They're com they're coming through the pizza gate. <laughs> they're coming through the pizza it's gate. A, it's a gateway, dimensional gateway, <laughs> in the shape of a pizza. Did you? Did you? Okay, well, that's the I, Alex I listened Jones. to the whole thing <laughs> at work, laughing. Everybody was like, "What are you listening to?" Dude, it's like that was crazy. like four hours. That was like a four hour thing man yeah he that was, was getting wasn't it? he was getting crossfaded and just talking about like yeah there's interdimensional beings that are coming across and they're programming all kinds of new technology into our <laughs> consciousness i mean they were making drones back in world war ii and it's absolutely fascinating <laughs> <laughs> no i i watched it on youtube this morning man i was um, <laughs> i don't know i think it might be funnier to watch it dude like you know oh my god dude it was amazing. It was absolutely so. beautiful. It's probably one of the best Joe. And it was kind of funny. Joe Rogan was sitting there the whole time with this look on his face like, man, this guy is oh nuts. My. I spent like how many years telling everybody, no, he's he's not really crazy. You just give him a listen. He'll be all right. And then he, he's got this look <laughs> yeah. on his face. And he, he even uploaded a meme to his Facebook page. I know you've seen this. <laughs> it's like, he's like when Alex Jones uh, gets high and drunk and tells you about interdimensional space creatures, <laughs> and helping the Obama administration <laughs> to investigate. And it just kind of trails <laughs> off into, and you can Google. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, he's just amazing. got that look on his face. Like what? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like regularly listen to Rogan's podcast. I think he's funny and you know, he has some kind of, he has a little bit of libertarian tendencies, but not, yeah. Not a, you know, but he did my. But you know, he's, a, he's entertaining, <laughs> right? He well, yeah, he he got that guy to come on and basically, make ma you know, label him or define him as a cult leader. Mm -hmm. So you know, you got to give him credit for that. 
But, dude, that Alex Jones one was gold, dude. Amazing. I, it's probably the best thing I've seen this year. Yeah, I kind of selectively listen to his podcast. If I see a name that I find interesting or if I see a description that I find interesting, then I'll listen to it. Right. Um, but other than that, there's just way too much stuff on there, and I'm listening to way too many other things. Like, I have a whole bunch of podcasts that I've been listening to lately. And a lot of times yeah. I'll just go through and just – if an episode seems interesting, I'll listen to it. If, but there's certain ones that I'll listen to, uh, no matter what. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So like, yeah, I ha- I have my regular ones, man. The fiends is pretty much a daily yeah, one for yeah, me. For me too. Except uh, when I'm on, I won't listen what, to that one. So you did. <laughs> I'll listen for you. Okay, because you guys do great. <laughs> but yeah, I've been trying to branch out more, man. Like Bill Burr has a great podcast. Oh yeah, um, I need to add that one. This dude, it's so funny. Uh, the morning, Monday morning podcast or whatever yeah i should probably so. give my list of because I, I wanted to do this with matt because matt has been kind of out of the fold with libertarian mm-hmm. media for a while so i might as well do it here because i don't know when the last t- next time i'll have him on so at least we'll get a head start of what's going on with this stuff so apparently these are in alphabetical order yep they are all right so uh, anarcho yakitalism allegedly is not pod fading allegedly yeah dude where's nick been i miss that guy <laughs> I know, right? I was always and like, jacks. Yeah, I'm always like, okay, here's the people who, who, because I used to have like this this way of kind of doing the the Lulberts. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm just throwing it out the window, uh, where it was basically like the you know the last person, the, the person who was on um, last has the lowest priority. So if I just did a show with mm-hmm. Baron, you know, like I want to have other people on before he's eligible to do a show again. Now I'm just like anybody, <laughs> like just because like <laughs> nobody can do it. Um, and hence my appearance on the show. No, yeah. <laughs> and Nick is one of the ones that it was like he was in the back catalog and it was like, okay, we're ready for you now. And it's just like he'll like my comment and that's it. <laughs> it's like, okay, apparently you're busy. Uh, but yeah, the yeah, he, he's, a, yeah, he's a young in man. He's probably out chasing skirt, you know, uh, well, slaughtering he, yaks, whatever he's got to do. Yeah, I, I think it's probably more <laughs> slaughtering yaks. He's trying to get his business off the ground. He, you get the money, then you get the power, and then you get the women. So, yeah. You got yeah yeah. <laughs> so first you get the yaks, then you get the meat, <laughs> then you get the women. <laughs> priorities, priorities. Uh, the next one is uh, what common sense with Dan Carlin. That one's okay. Um, yeah, that that I'll one's skip. like every six months. It seems like he puts one out. Is it, no, I think that's hardcore but, history, which is also oh, okay, on my that's list. Yeah. I think yeah. he does it like every week, but I haven't seen anything in a while. Let me check. When was the last time? Yeah, last time he did one was. Oh, I think yeah. he does it once December. a month. December, almost once a month. Yeah, because like one so, month, two month, three month, four month, five month, seven, seven, eight. So yeah. So he's he's pretty much on the Lulberts slash uh, zombies schedule. Yeah, but it's <laughs> funny because the Lulberts will produce like four episodes in one month, and the next month it's just nothing. Feast or famine. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. Contra Cook, man, of course. Bob Murphy. Yep. Um, yeah. And Hardcore History. Now, I have Ernie Hancock, de- Declare Your Independence, but I don't listen to it. <laughs> like, I see it come up, and I'm like, eh. Cause, well, yeah. the thing I – I know he has a radio show down here, and it's it's great, um, but – I don't have, I don't, you know, I'm at work, I think, usually when it's on. Mm-hmm. So, but the way he releases his podcast is like, he break, I think he breaks him up each episode up into like three one hour segments. So it's like, it yeah, it seems like the feed is just like, and there's no like info. So it's I'm actually just worse. Like, than I don't even that. know where to start. The first, the first one is the not only the first hour, but it's also the other two hours. And then he releases the second hour. And the third hour, but it lists one hour, two hour, three hours. So you think like, okay, if I listen to this one, then I listen to the second one. But you'll put them in your pod feed and go like, okay, so you heard the whole show. And then it starts playing the second hour again and then the third hour. You're <laughs> and, like, wait a minute. Yeah, it's just just do one. Come on. You don't need that. You yeah. Make a separate feed for the hourly stuff for in case you're doing syndication with like LRM. I think it'd be less work too. Dude. Just yeah. put out one. I mean, it is long for a podcast, but just put out one three-hour show, dude, and yeah. be done with it. And he at least then I can kind of yeah he gets into like anti-vaxxer type stuff every once in a while it's like oh god please 
yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, but I, do, I know, I know your feelings on that. <laughs> I, I do kind of get a kick out of the way he talks sometimes because he'll, he, he always does like this thing where it's like, so anyways, like, uh, you know, like I was talking to my friend and they were out there and they were talking about this, that, or whatever, and you know, the, 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 the you know, the vaccines with, and they're putting them in the, the kits thing. and the things and they're putting them in there and what have you and blah blah blah, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's so always, now what? He, that that formed his work. I've been dying to do somewhat of a parody of that for a while. Maybe I will. <laughs> uh, Freedom Fiends, yeah. of course. Godless Liberty, which just pod faded. But I guess they're doing another one, and I forgot to check which one it was. So I'm sure they may have a new show. Or I, I know they did. Well, they said they were going to do a new show. So I'm sure there's probably some more episodes. Kinsella on Liberty, which is not really a podcast. It's like anytime Stefan Kinsella is on a podcast, he'll upload it on a pod feed, he'll which just, is great. Yeah, because yeah, it's always it is good. Yeah, it's always good stuff. It kind of tells you what's going on in the world of IP and everything. So he mm-hmm. he recently did one. He's big on that. Yeah, he recently did one about music, and it was it was kind of fascinating because I guess it's a podcast called the Music Panure Podcast, and it's mm. a, basically a podcast to teach you how to make money. Um. You know, doing it, but the guy who who runs it doesn't believe in IP, and he's always been kind of beating around the bush about that issue for a while. So it's kind of interesting to see like how you can actually make money without intellectual property, which is like always the big complaint. Like, oh, how could you have you know how could you make money if you don't have intellectual property, right? Right. Yeah. You know, my IP, like my ro- you know where are my residuals, <laughs> <laughs> my my royalties. Apparently, it's possible. No, yeah, that's have a whole podcast about it. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check that out, man. That's interesting. I don't have, I don't play music professionally, but I mean, that's still a great source of content, man. I play for fun, <laughs> my own personal amusement most of the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so libertarians on fire. Um, yeah, I love, I love that one. He's got a, good, he's got great audio, and it's like a, you know, it's a good balance of uh, introductory libertarian principles and. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of new stuff, so I dig it. Yeah, it's really good. Um, it looks like he's is it ten three? Yeah, I guess he's back on the weekly schedule again. <sighs> Not, well, he he said he was going to come back weekly, and he didn't. Or we, and then he came back, and he did a show a week ago, and then one this week. So, yeah, I guess he's yeah. back apparently. <laughs> Sweet, <laughs> yeah, welcome back, good. Rick. Yeah. It is a little overproduced for my flavor, but it is an interesting listen for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. I mean, like I said, it's it's I, well done and well crafted, but it's a little. I, I like a little more uh, spontaneity or yeah. you know, off the cuff stuff. But, but I'm it's really still, wondering. It's still great, man. Does he really pay a voiceover guy for every single show? <laughs> <laughs> to do like I know, yeah, because I thought maybe he, like you could initially contract with him to read a few lines and you could reuse them, but mm-hmm. yeah, he he does it fairly. Uh, you know, sounds great though. Mixes it up. It's new stuff. Yeah, definitely. Especially for the first episode of a podcast, it's probably sounds even better than a lot of the stuff that even like fiends kind of branch out on, even after they get harangued by Michael Dean <laughs> <laughs> before they even produce their first episode. Yeah. Uh, Liberty Under Attack. No, it's good. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, brother. No, go ahead. <laughs> I say it, I. I think I think like Libertarians on Fire and some of those are like really good ones for uh, getting people. Yeah. Introducing them to the the core concepts or the first principles of of liberty because he explains it in a really clear and concise way. Mm-hmm. Uh, great audio, you know. And that's one of the worst things like I can you know you can do and put out a podcast and you turn off people because your audio sucks. You yep. might have great content or a great message, but people aren't going to listen to it if it's uh grading or, you know what I mean? Unless they like really want to suffer or work through it. So, but yeah, Liberty, Liberty under attack. Yeah. That's Liberty under attack. Really new one, that right? was uh was it Shane Radcliffe? There we go. Yeah, there it is. Shane Radcliffe. Right. It says right here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's one of the newer fiends too. Uh, I did a couple of shows with him. Yeah. He's good, man. He yeah, hasn't he's been on lately, but. Yeah, he did like the series about uh, direct action, which was really good. Um, yeah. Oh, he did a he did a show with Macy about ayahuasca. Of course, with about it's about ayahuasca. <laughs> uh, Lions of Liberty. <laughs> uh, I don't really listen to a lot of them. I just wait for like an episode that sounds interesting because there's just so much stuff. Uh, like if he does yeah. like, a show with Scott Horton, I'm listening to that. Oh yeah, um, every time. 
uh, the one where they were going through everything that he like, they, I think it was like once a week or something. They would go through everything that Gary Johnson was saying during his political campaign <laughs> and just saying like, <laughs> is that good or bad? And it's kind of funny. Cause like later you started hearing, um, uh, Ben Shapiro kind of do the similar type of show or at least portion of his show called uh, good Trump, bad Trump. <laughs> it was like, did you kind of get that from Mr. Johnson's neighborhood? It's kind of, Yeah. Live free of film. Yeah, it, I have I, not seen anything new out of that. Yeah, in six months. Wow. Nathan which one? Frazier. Nathan Fraser's Live uh, Free yeah. FM. Yeah. I don't know if he's doing something else, but like the uh entrepreneur. Anarchopreneur, is that what he calls it? It's kind I of think so, yeah. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there, but it looks like at least that one pod faded. I'm I'm, I'm he may have doing another one. I'm just not noticing. Louder with Crowder. It's easy to No, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm jumping like ahead one. of you. I say, I say, pod fading is easy to do, man. What do you say? The average length of a podcast is what, like seven episodes or something? Yep, and we're on so, thirty something. Killer. Yeah. Keep that. Keep that shit up. No, oh, I am. <laughs> I want it. I, this is like my break away from like work and having to deal with uh, learning how to program, which is fun, but at the same time, it can be frustrating. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. cool. I I wanted to do that a little bit, so I'm I'm, I'm excited to see where you go with that. Yeah. Oh, I've talked about this one thing. before many a times. Um, newborn libertarian. But now, yeah, they, I tried that one. Now they call themselves Make Liberty Great Again. Uh, they changed oh, the name man. of the podcast. It, it's it's not pro Trump. It sounds like it's going to be, but it's not. Um, they're just kind of capitalizing on that kind of search term, which is which is good, fine. But the last two episodes, that's smart have been good audio, great audio. Cause they're re- it seems like they're recording on the other person, the other co-hosts uh, side and Kim Shang has good audio. It's just that our co-hosts don't, but now that it's on their side, it sounds better. So, and it's a good show now. Um, I mean, I should probably kind of scroll through a lot of these uh, Patterson in pursuit. It's a good philosophy show and it's not kind of, it's kind of like listening to Molyneux, but without the kind of culty stuff. Um, <laughs> Penn Sunday School. I can only listen to it when it's live. Listening to older shows is kind of boring to me. It's a good show, yeah. though. It's a good show, though, but I just like catching it when it's live. Uh, Reason.com. Again, it's only something if the title interests me. School sucks, man. I have been putting off subscribing to this channel for the, like the longest time because I was like, I don't care about school. I don't plan on having kids. <laughs> right. But man, I was missing out on so much great shit. It's, it's really <laughs> like, good. What was I thinking? It's not most of it's not even about schooling anymore. It's a lot of it's just kind of like, oh, let's talk about the culture and let's talk about politics and yeah, no, they yeah they branch out in a lot of ways, man. Mm. That are are really great. Yep. Let's see, Scott Horton, of course, great great about foreign policy. Scottish Liberty is a great show, but bad audio is a hate crime. Um, schools. <laughs> no, sorry, Sovereign Tech. I, I I pay the money to get sovereign set sovereign sovereign tech pro, uh what is it the the, the Patreon p- episodes Patreon yeah oh, oh, it's it's the best Any, I need to get I need to get on that and the and the Lobert's Patreon yeah I I for that for our <laughs> I Patreon I do I, I try this. to pump out at least two driving episodes so it's like I'll drive home from work or I'll drive to work it's called driving shit home it's kind of like because I'm driving stuff home but it's what I can <laughs> I'm think driving of. it home I'm driving I'm just driving crap home is what I'm doing <laughs> right <laughs> like a lot of the times it's kind of rambly. I was worried it was like a little bit of self deprecation there I, I I want you to think highly more highly of yourself <laughs> yeah and there's also sometimes I'll do extra kind of like extended lullbirds on there I haven't done that in a while do you want to do one you want to do an Absolutely. extended? Dude, I'm down. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm down for whatever, man. All Absolutely. right, so we'll do another one. <laughs> we'll wrap this up. Yeah, but Scottish Liberty, yeah. It's a good show, but man, like, it's nice to hear what's going on in other countries, but it sounds terrible. Uh, and Cat Barbershop, that's the new one that's really good. Yeah, dude, I did yeah. that one. I think I, I think uh, I heard that on The Fiends. Michael was talking about it. So yeah. so Andrew Clavin and, and the Andrew Clavin show and the Ben Shapiro show. I like kind of listening to conservatives too. Um, I can't find a liberal that I like. <laughs> I can't do it, especially right about <laughs> now. They're going crazy. So it's a red herring, bro. No, <laughs> <Does it? laughs> um, no. I, 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 my first introduction to Shapiro was on Breitbart you know, back when it was, you know, semi-respectable yeah, and not just a mouthpiece no, for the for the alt right. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's not. An, it's so. not. They say they're alt right, but they're not. The they're. they're Alt right has the definition of alt right is 
right leaning people ethno. who believe in ethno nationalism. Mm. Ethno nationalism. Right? They don't believe in ethno nationalism. They're alt light. <laughs> That's what they've been called. Alt right yeah. light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. They're like the beltway. They're kind of like the Reason magazine of the alt right. right? Like the beltway. <laughs> <laughs> the Beltway, I said, uh, Beltway Libertarians, or uh, you know, for Reason Magazine, they're the the Beltway alt right <laughs> mouthpiece. <laughs> Pretty much, and they're, now they're establishment hacks. <laughs> oh, totally! Like Molyneux and Alex Jones. Like, what world have we stepped into? <laughs> it's crazy, right? Who would have thought? Like, you know, Alex Jones, or, you know, would be at the level he is i i enjoy what he does i don't you know i don't believe it but yeah <laughs> god i've never followed him but when he when something interesting pops up i'll pay attention but man it's just crazy mm -hmm. he's doing what he's doing right now good it, for him it's kind of fun watch if you if you're not subscribed to vile monkey excuse me vile monkey like you know what what he's saying is vile and he's a monkey um on youtube <laughs> you need to go check it out because he recently right. like got rid of not recently probably like a couple of years ago, he uh, privated all of his videos about uh, that he did about Alex Jones, and we were all kind of like wondering what happened to him. Some people have some mirrors of it, whatever. But now he's unprivating them, and they're kind of being released as like new episodes. They're not really being re-uploaded. It's just kind of like a glitch that YouTube has. Like if you private something for so long, it pretends it, it forgets that it was ever public. So when you uh, yeah. when you do it public, it it thinks it's a new episode and re-releases it with all the old comments. It's kind of weird. All right, I'm looking at it right now. So. Yeah, well, I can't wait till he does the five hour paranoia fest. <laughs> it's five. <laughs> it's it's all of his videos in five hour <laughs> the five hour long segment, I, <laughs> and it's all clipped up and mashed up to to be fucking hilarious. But yeah, oh, that's. Did you? I thought you sat through one of those. You said. I did. Or, I sat through that whole five <laughs> hours. It was worth oh, every man. single cent I paid for it. Be Zero cent. It best was, it was money awesome. ever spent. Yeah, <laughs> best time I ever spent as well. Well, time is money, so yeah, it was worth all the money I there lost that I could have been doing <laughs> making all kinds of money. The, the opportunity to need to cost was worth it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so moving oh. along, uh, dangerous, dangerous <laughs> history. Oh man, dangerous history. If yeah. you're not on this one, you're you're wrong. It's a, it's a must listen. <laughs> yeah, so good. I tried getting into the Free Coast Freecast, but for some reason it doesn't work with any podcatcher because they're doing like this weird. Really? Yeah, it's this weird thing where it's, it just says RSS feed, and you have to go to the page and then listen to it on the website. And I'm just like, I can't be bothered. Well, actually, no, because you can listen to it on this thing but it won't show up i can't add it to a playlist or anything it will play yeah it, uh, it works thing. on my um I don't know, looks like it's working on my iphone because <laughs> mm. i'm a beautiful one of the beautiful people it's it, no. apparently the free coast free <laughs> cast is for beautiful people yeah and not see. for me now there's two uh, there's there, i have two other podcasts one i don't really listen to i just have on there just in case something interests me and the other one i actually do listen to i'm actually going through the whole entire catalog, and it's it's about the Intellivision. I don't know if you're familiar with the Intellivision. Um, just from what I've seen, like you posting, okay, it, it yeah. looks really cool, man. So yeah, the Intellivision is a gaming console from 1979. It was, it's it's a full release it was until 1980. Like it, they did an initial run in 1979 uh, for Christmas, one year in one city, and it did super well. And they're like, okay, so we release it publicly, and it's kind of like in a more obscure system because it kind of was in Atari Shadow, but that's a system I grew up with, and it's a whole lot of fun. Um, so they kind of they kind of do game by game stuff, and they go through all the new stuff and all the things that are happening in the community, the new games that they're doing. It's kind of crazy how they're still making games for Atari and Intellivision and ColecoVision. <laughs> it's a, yeah, like brand wow. new games, completely. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, Joe Rogan, Lava Flow, of course, Lava Flow. Um, I just, yeah, I just, heard, I just stumbled onto that one. I haven't really had a chance to give it a go. So yeah. I'm excited. I remember when it was first announced, it was kind of first announced, uh, I think back when I was really kind of getting back into listening to podcasts again. Um, and it was, it's kind of like introductory stuff. So I never really paid too much attention to it, but now that they kind of got all the introductory stuff out of the way, it's getting really informative. Like. Um, stuff that I'm kind of interested in, but it's but every time, every once in a while, they kind of go back into kind of rudimentary principles of libertarianism, which is fine. That's it's needed. There's there needs to be new Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see, uh, the libertarian. 
with Richard A. Epstein. Sometimes there's something interesting in that show. Um, it's very scholarly, very very bow tie libertarian stuff. Yes. Oh, the Lulberts. Yeah, that show sucks. Um, let's see, the Seeds of Liberty. <laughs> you should still listen to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you should listen to how bad this is. Uh, anyway, so the, the Seeds of Liberty. That's of great, man. Yeah. Stop, just stop. <laughs> Although it's going downhill now that they got some weirdo from AZ on there. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> well, no, I guess I guess no, we have two weirdos from Arizona now. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's see. Um, Seeds of Liberty, of course. That's with uh, Jeremy Heisen mm-hmm. N word. That's one of the words I Heisenberg. won't that I will block. That and the yeah. uh, the, the C word that that there's n- that can't be well communist. No, it can't be well. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, can't yeah. He shall not be named. Uh, I, I keep trying to get back into Skeptics Guide to the Universe, but I can't listen to Rebecca Watson's voice without like cringing. Um, Stack Overflow. I haven't really listened to that one yet. Uh, that's about programming. But it's my thing, and I'll listen to it eventually. Tom Woods, of course. Yeah. Think About Now. Oh, yeah. um, but Think About Now. Um, that was originally... Uh, it was something else, but then it changed to the Libertarian Atheist podcast. That's the one with uh, Carlos Morales. Mm-hmm. Interesting show. Um, again, it's one of those shows where I kind of pick and choose what I want to listen to out of it. Um, uh, Needle Drop, which kind of pod faded. That, that's with Anthony Fantano. That's the guy that does all the the uh, YouTube <laughs> videos about all the albums that come out. Uh, oh, yeah. Speaking that's of which, great. Velocities and music. That's all about music. Um so someone told me to subscribe to We Are Libertarians because they apparently they have a podcast. And I was like, okay. And it was like the last episode was three years ago, one episode. I'm really? Like, okay, yeah. So I why think I had that me, one. And, yeah. Why right. did you tell me to subscribe to this one? Oh, and then there was this other one that's really terrible. Uh, no, dude. They, zombie well, unless, government <clears throat> interview or something. Uh, yeah, that's like the, what the fuck is that about? That's like the worst ew. name ever. <laughs> Ugh. By the way, what is with that name? <laughs> was it because you guys uh, were really interested in uh, Walking Dead? Uh, no, I'm, I'm actually, I've never been like a huge fan of The Walking Dead. Um, I, I watch it and there are things I enjoy about it. Mm-hmm. I've just always been kind of, uh, you know, not always, but for a few years been uh, really into like the Zombie. concept or, or what zombies represent. And it's a little clickbaity, you mm-hmm. know, like... You know, what's a zombie? It's somebody who kind of believes in the state or just kind of follows whatever, you know. And how, you know, don't be a zombie. How do you not be one, you know? Be yourself, you know. Yep. I used to be really into The Walking Dead, and I think it really jumped the shark. And there's a lot of people. I think the only thing people disagree about are jumping the shark with uh, Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And usually the kind of debate is like, what season was that? And I think it was the fourth season for me. When they just started, but I think they, it's when they killed off the baby. I was like, okay, you're killing off the infant. I'm done. <laughs> like, you're just, now this is just turning into a show like, okay, who's going to die next? That's what it is. And they're never going to kill Daryl. So, what's the point of watching it? So, yeah, and that, that's my biggest gripe. They, well, they're not going to kill their cash cow, man. Yeah. You know, he's, he's their merch, he's the, the merchandising, uh, you know, golden goose. Yep. So, but no, I, I've, ne- I've only, I've only read a few of the comics. Um, I, I kind of subscribe to what George R. Romero said about, or George Romero. I'm thinking of George R. R. Martin. George Romero <laughs> said about the <laughs> getting my the fifth genres needle. mixed up here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. we don't talk about him. Right. Yeah, um, but it, where it's basically The Walking Dead's a soap opera with an occasional zombie thrown in, and I think that's a very apt yeah. description of it. But yeah. Um, I, they they really lost me with the whole uh, cliffhanger, and then uh, this season has just sucked. So I'm just – I'll still watch it, but I'm not excited I'm yeah. over it. Well, way you know better, what? Way better TV out there. It's one of the – you know what I can't stand, by the way? Going, going way back to sports ball. <laughs> like it's kind of funny <laughs> listening to like libertarians complain about, oh, why are you watching you know sports ball? Because it's just a distraction from things that matter. And then like the next post will be, oh, I just saw the greatest episode of Better Call Saul ever. Did you see it last right. night? It was, it's like, do you think that's not a distraction as well? <laughs> like all of these things are a distraction. That's what entertainment is. It's a distraction my, from reality. My form yeah. of entertainment is is yeah. more libertarian than yours, or you know, or more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about how you spend your time and what you know, do with it as you wish. 
No, but we need to centrally plan people's entertainment because liberty. Right. Yeah. You have, you have to centrally <laughs> centrally uh, approved um, forms of, of media consumption. It's annoying. Or I can't not, stand you know, it. I, I kind of used to do Libertarian purity test. I used to do that. And when I do do that still when I'm like, oh, this show is objectively bad, it's usually because I'm just like trolling people. But it's usually I really do feel that way. But it's just like I really don't like Game of Thrones. So I'm gonna troll people who do like Game of Thrones and say like you're objectively I, I wrong. I will fight you, sir. Yeah, I will fight well, you. Well, it's it's no, a I'm terrible just... show. It's it's objectively the books bad. are the the books are way better. They're also a lot worse in some ways. But I'm just yeah. The, 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 the fantasy the fantasy genre does not do it for me. I could not stand Lord of the Rings. I got through hmm. halfway through this. Oh, I got no. I think I actually did finish the second movie, but the the, the third one. And I, you I call yourself bothered. an anarchist, sir? Right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, you don't. Not anymore. No, C.S. Right. Lewis. No, I could. I could get through Narnia. Narnia is great. <laughs> yeah, it really was. But I really can't. A lot of the the fantasy genre stuff, I just can't do it. Just dragons don't yeah. do it for me. I just don't. And so you're not a, you're not a fan of Larkin Rosen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I already knew that though. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> yeah, you no, know, I it was. It's not really the fantasy uh, that 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 drives me away from him. It's all that venom. I just can't. I can't handle Canadian yeah. tuxedos. Well, it's fireproof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a form of protection, man. It was a, a protection from uh, for us because he is a redhead. They do call us fire crotches. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's for our own protection. It's it's a <laughs> containment. <laughs> so I don't want to violate the nap, so I wear this Canadian tuxedo because it's fireproof. Yeah, protect you from my. I fire can't take crotch. this denim. Don't ask me to take this denim jacket off. Uh, <laughs> fire chest. Carnage too. will ensue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Not a fan of Larkin Rose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he had some interesting early stuff, but yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, the, I, I mean, know. like the 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 dangerous superstition. Yeah, it's great, but he's been mm -hmm. kind of like, I don't know. It's kind of like Ted Nugent, Re you know. Like you go to see resting Ted, on his laurels. Yeah, yeah. kind of Ted Nugent. You're gonna, you're gonna go listen to him, not to hear him talk about the NRA or whatever. You're gonna go hopefully hear him play like some of his classics from the '70s. And can you name one new song yeah. that he's done in the last 20 years? No. Nope. <laughs> Nope. You're gonna go see him to play. Um, was it Catch Scratch Fever? Is that, is that him? Yeah, Catch Scratch Fever. Okay. Wango yeah. Tango. I don't. That's about. A, what? There's another one I forget. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so over classic rock. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's it's kind of what he's doing. And if you look at his a lot of his Facebook posts, you can kind of predict what he's gonna do, and you can kind of make bets on it because it's one of three things. It's it's like cops are bad. Mm -hmm. uh, government is violence. And the non-aggression principle is is moral. You know, viol not violating the non-aggression principle is moral. It's one of those three things. Yeah, a combination of those three. Spin the wheel. Yeah, right. yeah. And anytime something new comes out, well, let's apply the NAP to it. Let's apply anti-copism to it, and, which are all great. Like I'm not bashing those things. Well, except no, the NAP. absolutely, no, yeah. except the NAP. But <laughs> but I mean, uh, like everything else, you're just kind of like, okay. But I've heard this. I've heard this. Like yesterday right. on your feed, and I heard this the day before on your feed. For the last eight years, you know, you've been doing this stuff. Ever since you stopped doing the tax protest stuff, it's kind of the same thing over and over again. But I don't know. Well, <laughs> he's quote unquote retired, <laughs> right? <laughs> but he's still posting wonder, stuff. So that was convenient. Yeah, <laughs> timing. Whatever. So I think I need to Whatever. get another beer, and we should probably wrap this one up. If you wanted to do an extended one, right? Want to do the extension? Yeah, man, we can All do right. that. I got it. Well, Plug your website for uh, the people for the people who don't pay that in the cheap sheet. <laughs> those bleeds. <laughs> We're gonna uh, when you're done listening to the. <laughs> you can find me at a uh, zombies government and new uh, podcast on Stitcher, iTunes, on Facebook, Twitter, all the you know social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. CGY podcast, man. Worms. We do, we have some fun like Shit. the Lobert, just not Damn as good. It. <laughs> hey, I, I'll, I'm gonna get to an episode where I won't say that. <laughs> Whatever, I already did worms. <laughs> worms. They give me money and listen to more.
Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this can be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal actions from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country, and in a bunch of Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about FiendPhone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.